little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRoot.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. All right, uh, Dow is allowed to go down today. Um, don't know why, although the Fed meeting is today. And so 27,000 is a pretty stiff number. I think I think Mnuchin went a little overboard in his rigging job up to 27,000. People are starting to question, hey, the whole world is shut down for months and stock market's nearing all-time highs. Come on, Mnuchin, a little more... A little more cover on the on the uh, market rigging is needed. <laughs> it's insane. It is absolutely insane that the whole world can shut down and the stock market, which is supposed to be a reflection of the economic condition going forward, has literally popped right back up to the top. That is the power of market rigging. That is the power of computer market manipulation. It's all powerful. And I know I talk about it a lot, but I, it's so important to drill it in that this is not real. What you see in the stock market, the bond market, the commodity markets, the crypto markets is not a real fair market value of an asset. It is 100% rigged, mostly coordinated out of the Federal Reserve and out of the U.S. Treasury. Steve Mnuchin was head of IT for Goldman Sachs. That's all you need to know, really. But people are starting to say, hey. We're screwed. Unless we keep pumping money into these businesses, bailing out people and bailing out businesses, we are screwed. And we can't justify a 27,000 Dow. World, eco world economy crash sparks warning on early lifeline withdrawal. The coronavirus pandemic is splintering the world economy. And policymakers can't risk a premature withdrawal of lifelines to businesses and the most vulnerable people. You notice they didn't say banks. Businesses and vulnerable people. Who has had the biggest bailouts of all? It's right here. Since September 11, 2019, the banks are currently at $3.7 trillion in bailouts. $3.7 trillion. Do you remember 2008? They, Hank Paulson had to go to Congress. Had to go to Congress to get a $700 billion bailout. Now they've done it without Congress at $3.7 trillion. Four $414 billion of those are to foreign banks because those banks have banks that are failing. It is insane. $3 trillion in permanent injections buying shitty assets. Why? Because they were rehypothecated at the DTCC. Multiple owners of treasury bonds at the DTCC. They didn't know what to do, so they just decided to do two things. One, we'll just buy them. If the Fed just prints money and buys these toxic assets, they're no longer on the books of the, the banks. And number two, we'll get the FICC guarantees to support the more questionable trades. That's done through the DTCC. That's at $216 billion. And then we have overnight, last night, <laughs> $77.2 billion were required overnight or the banks would have failed and everything would have fallen apart. So yes, why in the world does this only say the coronavirus pandemic is splintering the world economy and policymakers can't risk a premature withdrawal of lifelines to businesses? That's not bank. I wouldn't call a bank a business. <laughs> and the most vulnerable people. Of course, it's the people. These are the most vulnerable people. That's why we have to bail out the banks. It made the grim assessment as it forecasts a global slump, slump of 6% this year, more than the World Bank earlier this week, than the World Bank had predicted. That's based on a scenario of the virus continuing to recede. A second wave, did we warn everybody they're going to say, oh, second wave, third wave, fourth wave. A second wave. Remember why they said we had to shut everything down to flatten the curve, meaning there's not enough hospital beds for everybody who has the virus. All right, now there is. Everybody's got a hospital bed. Every hospital is completely empty in the United States. 
not completely, but for the most part, empty. We can handle a spike. The the curve has been flattened. And now you're saying, oh, oh, uh, we better bail people out because things are going to get worse. People get, might get sick. We better shut down all businesses and give them more money. That, based on a scenario of the virus continuing to recede, a second wave, which the OECD said in a, is an equally likely scenario, could mean a 7.6% contraction. As authorities relax restrictions on movement and activity, some mem- numbers suggest economies are through the worst of the slump. But the OECD said withdrawing support for workers and businesses risks prolonging the economic and social damages from the pandemic. In the U.S., some Republicans are already questioning the need for more stimulus after a surprise jump in payrolls in May. Now, we all know that the payroll jump in May was ridiculous. It had to do with the PPP. It had to do with Trump faking numbers. It was just a joke. Here's the problem. When that joke ends, when the PPP ends, all of a sudden the numbers get destroyed. Are you ready for that? It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all spin. It's all ridiculous. Quote, Maybe now is not the best time. I am not saying we shouldn't do it ever, but it may be too soon to do it effectively, Mick Mulvaney, former acting White House Chief of Staff, told Bloomberg TV. A better plan now is to take a deep breath and see what happens in the next 30, 60, and 90 days. So keep pumping money. Give everybody money. This is the end of the road to Ruta. What is Ruta right in the sand? Print money to infinity. Now, they have been doing it already behind the scenes and not telling people about it. But now, it is happening in front of our face. In the OECD's view, huge risks remain, with some industries facing long-term damage. Airlines have already announced thousands of job cuts. It warned that an increase in bankruptcies and sustained period of unemployment is likely. Bankruptcies are going to go through the roof. Commercial real estate is done forever. Let me say that again. Commercial real estate is done forever. You're not going to see the malls come back. Everybody's shopping online now. The shift has been made 100%. And that's, I think it's $11 trillion in derivatives of commercial real estate. Good luck. Good luck out there. Now's the time. Don't look at the smoke and mirrors. Get your cryptos in hand. Get your gold and silver in hand. Don't watch the market rigging. Just hang on for dear life. It's the for dear life part that is really kicking in right now. You gotta. It's hard to hang on because the amount of market rigging is off the charts. Given the already clear impact of restrictions and lockdowns, the OECD's gloomy outlook is unsurprising. But it also highlighted the social fallout and the deepening fault lines created by the virus. More trade restraints are springing up. Lockdowns have heightened inequalities between workers and the youngest and least qualified on the front line. So, of course, save the people. Bailing out the banks is going to save the people. Bailing out the banks. Look at look at what the banks are doing in the last, uh, say, last week, last five days. The overnight repos were kind of low. At one point, it hit $1.1 billion. And look in the last couple of days, 41, 57, 43, 56, 106, 67, 77. That's billion dollars they're giving a bank overnight because they will not survive if they don't give them the money overnight. That's how crazy fractionally reserved these banks are. They make highly speculative bets. The bets have been crashing down to nothing. The banks are bailing out J.P. Morgan for rigging the silver market. The banks go in there and rig all markets. And who's providing the money? Federal Reserve System. They're providing the money to rig the markets for the good guy, for the good of you. It's insane. It is insane. Yes, you should have massive amounts of physical silver in your own possession. I love when people say, oh my God, it's too heavy. I can't carry it around with me. Well, it's rare that you're going to have to bug out on a moment's notice. Dick did, and he sold all his gold and silver. He didn't need to. He could have buried it in the ground and come back to Hawaii, but he did, and bought cryptos. Cryptos are very, very, very portable. That is the best, the the big differentiator between gold, silver, and cryptos is that, well, there's a couple, but the big one is they're mobile. You can go into any country. 
and bring a billion dollars with you in cryptos. Now, they might ask you, do you have a crypto address? You don't tell them. Our system is full of criminals on both sides of the aisle. On the regulator side and government side, criminals everywhere. On the individual side, there's criminals there too. It's hard to live these days. Year zero is a bitch. But hey, we're almost halfway through it. Worse, the, the bad thing is, second half of the year is going to be worse, hell of a lot worse than the first. So hang in there, my friends. If you're a silver guy, you're loving it's up uh, 0.3%, point, uh, 30 cents. They, Steve Mnuchin allowed it to go up 30 cents. If you don't have any physical silver, send my friend Andy Shackman an email. Andy at milesfranklin.com. He can set you up with physical delivered right to your door. I'll get you the best price for Road to Ruta members. Tell them you're from Road to Ruta and I'll get you the best price. And cryptos are looking pretty much the same. When is Bitcoin going to hit 10000 Remember, crypto investors chase shiny objects. Bitcoin hits 10000 they all get in. Oh, I got to get in. Fear of missing out. Shiny objects. 10000 is a shiny object. They're going to chase that down. Everything else is just kind of puttering around. Those Theta investors are loving it right now. Theta's back to 25 25 bucks. Yes, it's up for the year, but it's down from its peak high when it was a shiny object. And then they announced Google is participating. The more you think about it, the more you can say, oh my God, Theta is going to be here for decades and be extremely useful as for not only video content streaming, but as the internet. Data is data when it's streaming. When you have a huge network, of nodes and validators, you have an extremely secure system. As the world falls apart, it's all decentralized. I think Theta is going to be Internet 2.0 at some point and hit uh, Michelle White Dove's predictions of a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars per Theta coin. And that is why I'm giving away 100 Theta with every subscription, private road subscription. Or renewal, I'm giving away 100 Theta and 100 Theta Fuel on a paper wallet. So join the road to Ruta today. That's all I got for you today. We're going to be doing a live stream today. Today is the 10th. We're going to be doing a live stream at about, I'm not quite sure the time, somewhere around noon Pacific time. Noon Pacific time, road to Ruta live stream. Get your questions ready, and we're going to have some fun. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. <music>